Southeast Asia, physical geography. Let's get started. Okay, so we're taking a look at now Southeast Asia, which is represented by this graphic. And we're talking about the countries that include uh, Japan. I'm sorry, China, Japan, China, Japan, Mongolia, South Korea, North Korea, and Taiwan. So it's all in this area, right in here. All in this area, okay? So number one, the first country that we'll spend a lot of time on is right here, number one, which is the People's Republic of China. And the People's Republic of China makes up about 80% of the land area that we'll be studying today now not everything in green excuse me not everything in green is Southeast Asia or is what we'll be studying East Asia this is actually considered Russia but for this part this is what we'll be studying about 80 percent of this is the People's Republic of China also right here the People's Republic of China has the world's largest population number two one of the second countries that we'll highlight is the country of Mongolia. It is right above the People's Republic of China, and it has approximately 13% of the land of East Asia. Uh, Mongolia's population is less than 1% of China. So take a look at these two countries. Uh, China here, Mongolia here. The population of Mongolia is less than 1% of China. So, um, so it is one of Mongolia is one of the least densely populated countries in the world. And the remaining 7% of the land that we'll be focusing on is made up of by Japan, Taiwan, North Korea. I'm sorry, Japan, Taiwan, North Korea, and South Korea, all in this area. So. You're looking at the Korean Peninsula, Japan, um, and Taiwan over here. So moving to the next concept, we'll be discussing the different peninsulas, islands, and seas that make up Southeast Asia or the part of Asia that we'll be focused on, East Asia or Southeast Asia. It's, I will use those interchangeably. The main one that we'll focus on is right here, which is the Korean Peninsula, and that's made up of the country. The countries of North and South Korea are actually on the Korean Peninsula. Now, the many peninsulas and islands that dot the western part of the, of the Pacific Ocean, and they divide it into different smaller bodies of water. So let me really go into this real quick. Bam. This is an example of one of the smaller bodies of water. Yellow Sea is on one side of the Korean Peninsula, the Sea of Japan is on the other side. If we went out a little further, you guys will see Japan right there. And speaking of Japan, highlighting this, of course, with this graphic illustrates is the globe and the country in green is the country of Japan. Bam, right there. So we'll discuss about Japan are some of the mountains. They're actually Japan is an island made up of a lot of mountains. And what Japan is basically is four large mountainous islands. Um, and a lot of smaller ones, they make up uh, Japan. It is actually called Archipelago, which is a, is a chain of islands. So Japan is actually a chain of islands very similar to Hawaii, the way that Hawaii and the United States is a chain of islands. There are three primary islands in Japan. Bam, bam, bam. Um, the Honshu is the central and the largest island right here. And it's where most of Japan's largest cities are located. And Mount Fuji is also right here on the Honshu Island. It is the largest mountain in Japan. It is also an inactive volcano. So they actually, uh, the country of Japan, the major cities of Japan or the country of Japan are located near an inactive volcano. Now we'll move a little bit to the mountains in China. And this is what this graphic illustrates. And the word, before we get started, the word for mountain in China is Shan. So you'll see Shan after each of the names that is Shan. So China's mountains, they include the Kunlun Shan, which is here, which are basically, we would call those the Kunlun Mountains. Uh, the Tian Shan here. And the Himalayas Mountains, which are make up the southern border of the country, which with the part of that uh, China that borders India. And once again, the word Shan is for Chinese for mountain. And moving to the next type of physical feature that we'll discuss 
very briefly are the deserts and so when we take a look at this this is what this graphic illustrates are some of the major deserts of the world of course we see the united states north africa but what we're focusing on today is the gobi desert okay so the gobi desert is located in southern mongolia uh, in northern china it is a cold weather desert so not all deserts when we think about deserts sometimes we'll think about deserts. most of the time your, your visual picture of deserts are that it's very hot there's no water but deserts are not always hot weather deserts definitely when we look in north africa the united states australia hot weather deserts but no the gobi desert and antarctica actually are what we would call cold weather deserts so it's very cold the gobi desert right here it's a cold desert and it's asia's largest desert and this next graphic that i would like to take your attention to is draw your attention to is a space is a picture from space of or a satellite of the Asian peninsula of part of the Asian sub South Asian continent subcontinent so what we see here is South Asia which is India Bangladesh Pakistan everything we discussed in the last unit this right along the northern border this is actually how the Himalayas mountains this physical feature of these landforms are the Himalayas mountains this is how the Himalayas mountains look from space and right here is what we call the plateau of tibet and remember what a plateau is is just a raised it's raised land that is flat okay so it's a lot of flat land so the plateau of tibet is located in southwest china it is the region's highest plateau with an average elevation of about fifteen thousand feet so you can see that when this from i guess this would kind of be a relief map um of or an aerial map so this would kind of be a combination of a relief aerial map but you can see that the land is raised from the himalayas mountains and it's still and there's flatness and then it goes down again so the plateau of tibet is the region's highest plateau with an average elevation about fifteen thousand feet now moving to water features next so let's talk really quickly about um, the two major water features or the two major rivers that we'll discuss in East Asia and they are the Yellow River in China and the Yangtze River in China so the Yellow River it's called the Yellow River first because it carries we talk about soil and it's very similar to what we discussed when we discussed the Indus River Valley um, when we discussed the Nile River when we discussed that the that the river carries it carries soil and when the river overflows it replenishes the area near it so it replenishes the areas outside of the river so the soil outside the river so the yellow river same concept it's called the yellow river because it carries um, a tons of fine yellowish brown topsoil called los and it's home to one of the world's culture herbs and it's for the exact same reasons that we discussed with the Nile River Valley culture herb and for the Indus River Valley culture herb the Yangs River is right here is China's longest river and it's right under 4,000 miles and it's the third longest river in the world the Great Imperial Canal is right here in China um, it is the world's longest artificial waterway and it, it joins the two rivers together and it's very 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 old this is actually goes back to the 5th century BCE um, when some of the earliest civilizations were working on it so we've been continuous work or work is going on through different parts of the different parts of, of time for about 1500 years on this canal and it's once again the world's longest artificial waterway Bam. so and the next concept that we'll discuss we mentioned a little bit about the rivers and so you guys knew this was coming and I even discussed it briefly which is the yellow river valley culture herb we should be pretty much used to this this map by now right so these are the different culture herbs that we discussed or the culture herbs once again are ancient civilizations that spread knowledge technology uh, religion to the other place to the other smaller civilizations so we're looking at the, the and let's take them from left to right 
We have the Nile River Valley Culture Hearth. Where is it? Here you go. Nile River Valley Mesopotamia Culture Hearth. Indus River Valley Culture Hearth. And once again, we have the Yellow River Valley Culture Hearth. So the same types of physical features that occurred here um, occurred in these other three places. Access to land. Uh, I'm sorry, access to water for travel. Also, what occurred here is that when the rivers overflowed, it replenished the soil in the areas. That's what we saw here. Regular flooding of the river. Regular flooding of the rivers helped replenish the soil, which contributed to having fertile soil in this area, which is very, very, very important. It's another one of the features necessary for a culture herd to develop. And of course, temperate or moderate temperatures. So it had to be somewhere that people wanted to live and did not have extremely harsh temperatures. In discussing a little bit about the Yellow River Valley Culture Hearth, um, it started from the 21st century BCE, so up until about 907 AD, so which is right about for an extremely long period of time, right about 3,000 years. And the cool thing about the Yellow River Valley Culture Hearth is that for a lot of of its period, a lot of its history is isolated by mountains, so it developed with a lot of outside influences. So we'll talk about some of the outside influences later, but for the longest period of time, um, this is up until about the this, to the building of the Silk Road, which we'll get to in another video. For about 2,000 years, the, the, this uh, the Yellow River Valley Culture Hearth, they developed on their own. They developed without a lot of outside influences. They're responsible for Inventing the concept of bureaucracy, which is when you have non-elected people, non-elected officials actually carry out the rules of carry out the will of the government. So when you know we think about how we elect sheriffs or we elect mayors, where the people who help the mayors actually run the city or town or, or, or community, that is what a bureaucrat is. People, non-elected officials who help elected officials carry out laws. Um, the world's longest man-made river. They actually started work on this during this culture earth, which we talked about the Grand Canal. And also, the Yellow River Valley culture earth is responsible for silk, uh, developing silk, creating silk, iron, iron working, and pottery. Please remember, highlight the homework learning targets. Answer the questions in bold lettering. Have a good evening. See you guys in class. The end.